getting into my fifth example, once again, let's look at another function that encounter with fractions here. So we want to find a domain. So find a domain. So here, my function f of x equals x cubed plus 1 all over x squared minus 9. And so once again, out of two main concerns, this problem here, we only in this problem, we only run into the first concern where we're having a fraction. So when you have a fraction, then keep in mind your denominator cannot be equal to zero. And so I am going to set the, the denominator equal zero first to find all the bad values causing the denominator to be equal to zero. And so here, solving the denominator for zero, I'm going to need to add 9 to both sides, and here I have x squared equals 9. And here you can solve this equation here using the square root property by doing x equals 2 plus and minus 3, because you're taking the square root of 9. So x equals plus and minus 3, these are the bad values because these two values, either positive 3 or negative 3, cause x squared minus 9, which is the denominator of the func function, equals 0. And so, in here, I want to say that the domain, to finalize the domain, I'm going to say the domain is going to be any x value except positive and negative 3. So that's the logic. And now, building on this logic, once again, we need to re-express the domain here in interval notation. So the best way is to draw for yourself the line of number. And here I'm having negative 3, and here is somewhere I have positive 3. And make sure you're putting these values here on the number line in increasing order from the left to the right. And now the domain, the logic here is saying that I want any x value except 3 and negative 3. So that means on this line right here, I'm shading anywhere except 3 and negative 3. So anywhere in between those values, I'm shading it all, and I'm leaving these in circle negative 3 and 3, indicating that I'm excluding just specifically those two values. And now, this graph here once again makes it clear how you can put the domain in interval notation. So now the first shading here gives me the interval minus infinity to minus 3. The middle shading part is giving me the interval negative infinity to 3. I'm sorry, negative 3 to 3. And the last interval, the last shading here, gives me the interval from 3 to positive infinity. And here we are joining the three little intervals together. And that's how we finish writing our domain in interval notation. And once again, this is the domain of the functions. f of x equals x cubed plus 1 over x squared minus 9. So now at this point, we have had about three examples where the function here encounters with fractions. And then you can see that throughout the three examples, nowhere in these examples that you have ever have to deal with the numerator. So keep in mind when you're trying to find the domain of a rational fraction of a frac I mean of a rational function, a function that involves fractions like this. When you run into a fraction, you never have to encounter with the numerator. You only have to pay attention to the, the denominator. In my sixth example. In my sixth example, now this time, let's look over to a different type of function here. So we want to find the domain still. And here in this case, my function here is f of x equals square root 3x minus 15. In this function, I do not see any fraction. However, I do see square root. So now, out of the two concerns. In the two concerns, this function runs into the second concern where we have a square root. So now, if you look, rely on the basic hints, remember, any quantity underneath the square root cannot be negative. So meaning, the safe zone for this function is to set 3x minus 15. Notice 3x minus 15 is the entire quantity that I took out from the from the part underneath the square root, 3x minus 15. I want it to be greater than or equal to 0. 
And once again, why is that? Because, like I said, the basic hint is saying that any quantity underneath the square root need to be cannot be negative. And so cannot ne be negative, ne meaning it must be greater than or equal to zero. And so now I am going to solve for all those x values that cause this quantity to be greater than or equal to zero. And so solving for that inequality now, we're going to add 15 to both sides. And we have 3x greater than or equal to 15. And now dividing both sides by 3 without worrying about changing the inequality since we're dividing by a positive number. I'm going to end up with x greater than or equals to 5. So what is this final inequality telling us? It tells me that these any values here, any values in this range, any values that's 5 or higher is going to cause the quantity underneath the square root 3x minus 15 greater than or equal to 0. Or in other words, x greater than or equal to 5 is going to make this quantity underneath the square root non-negative. So now, to finalize, to re-express the domain here, so this is going to be our domain. So now to re-express the domain, the answer of the domain in interval notation. Once again, it's a good idea to draw for yourself the graph. And here, 5 is somewhere there. The final inequality is saying that we need to shade anywhere to the right-hand side of 5. And this time, I am also including 5. Okay, so now that graph is making it obvious for you of how you can put your final answer of the domain in interval notation. So in interval notation, my domain is going to look like this. 5, comma, infinity, parentheses on infinity size, on infinity, infinity side, and brackets on 5. And here, that's my domain in interval notation. In another example, showing you how to find the domain of a function that involves square root. Here we're looking at example number 7. We want to find a domain again. Find the domain. And here my function is f of x equals square root. And here I have 4 minus 2x. So once again, my function, in this function, out of the two concerns, this function only runs into the second concern, where you have square root. And once again, keep in mind, we need, we require the square root to be non-negative. We require the quantity underneath the square root to be non-negative. Meaning, I have to, I'm going to have to set up the inequality as following. 4 minus 2x greater than or equal to 0. Because 4 minus 2x is the quantity underneath the square root, and I want that quantity to be non-negative. So now to solve for this inequality for the appropriate x values, I'm going to need to subtract 4 from both sides. And that gives me minus 2x greater than or equals to minus 4. And now solving for x, I am going to divide both sides by negative 2. And here that gives me x less than or equals to positive 2. So now, Notice, back in the technique for solving the inequality, here we're dividing both sides of the inequality by a negative number. And so keep in mind, that's what caused the inequality here to switch from a greater than or equal to, change that to a less than or equal to. So now, this is my domain. In this function, the domain is going to be any x value 2 or less. But now, putting that domain in interval notation, first, drawing a graph is going to help. Here's your lineup number, and there's your 2. The inequality, the final inequality is saying that the, the domain for the function is going to be anywhere less than 2 or equals 2. So now I'm going to shade to the left-hand side of 2 this time, and I am using brackets on 2 once again, because the inequality does contain the equal sign. And so now, finalizing my domain in interval notation. The shading is telling me that the interval is going to have to be from negative infinity to 2. And that's how we get the domain in interval notation.